Krishna. In the name of our Almighty God, I thank you for this wonderful privilege which God has given us to share some uh, Lord's words with you. And uh, we are very thankful for this opportunity uh, that uh, God has given us to share this uh, wonderful words of life <clears throat> with you across uh, many continents, especially during these last days. Uh, we also uh, bring love and greetings of uh, all the dear brethren here in uh, Karnataka in various places also, and uh, especially from our family also. And we also thank uh, our dear brother, brother Jacob and all the dear brethren who are uh, associated uh, in this uh, Lord's work. Uh, we thank you, the brethren of the Solomon Island, uh, the brethren of uh, Jonah family and uh, other brothers also for uh, inviting us uh, to preach the Lord's words. Thank you. <clears throat> Today, we are going to see a subject on Israel. We all know very well uh, regarding the Lord's uh, second coming that uh, we are living in His presence. Uh, we are living in His parousia. So hence, uh, it is our uh, duty to learn and uh, to study very important things uh, which are related uh, to His uh, presence. We all know about uh, the fig tree uh, which Jesus actually cursed uh, when he was uh, coming on the way to Jerusalem during the end of his ministry. We know that uh, Jesus uh, saw a fig tree from very far and it was full uh, of leaves uh, and well flourished. So Jesus thought <coughs> there will be more fruits. Hence, when Jesus came near the fig tree in search of the fruit, there was no fruit at all. So what did Jesus do? We know very well that uh, Jesus cursed the fig tree. So once when uh, Jesus <coughs> cursed the fig tree, uh, the Bible says that uh, the fig tree withered immediately. So why did Jesus uh, curse the fig tree? See, he had so much of power that he could have, uh, you see, instead of cursing it, he could have blessed it. When if he would have blessed it, the entire fig tree would have been with figs and everybody could have ate it. But instead of doing that one, why did Jesus curse the fig tree? If you see, dear brethren, actually, there is a meaning for it, isn't it? See, Jesus, whatever he does, you see, there is a reason behind it. He doesn't do anything just like that casually. So, uh, let us read that verse, brother. Can somebody read it in English for me? <coughs> Matthew 21st chapter, verse 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. See, the fig tree withered away. So, here he says, Jesus uh, saw the fig tree uh, on the way. But in other gospel, he, saw, he says that uh, Jesus saw the fig tree from very far. And he came in search of the fruits, uh, but uh, there was no fruit found in it. So, why did Jesus actually curse it? You see, there is a meaning in it. Actually, the fig tree in the Bible represents the nation of Israel. Let us see. Osea 9.10. Can uh, somebody read it in English? Osea 9.10. Yes, brother. Osea 9, chapter 10th verse. I found Israel like a grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first tribe in the fig tree at her first time. But they went to Balpeor and serpented themselves unto that shame. And there abominations were according as they loved. Thank you, sir. It says, I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as a first tribe in the fig tree. So here the fathers, the forefathers of Israel are compared to the first ripe fruit of the fig tree. If the fathers of Israel represents the fig fruit, 
then what does the tree from which the fruit sprang up it represents if you see it represents the nation of israel from whom through whom came the forefathers of israel hence uh, jesus saw this fig tree the nation of israel from far away from even from heaven he came in search of the fruits at the first advent but when he came near in search of the fruits he did not get sufficient of fruits so what did jesus do he should have blessing it he cursed it and as soon as he cursed it the bible says that it withered away so similarly the nation of israel was completely destroyed but to your wonder when jesus gave the signs about his second presence jesus spoke one important sign that is about the parable of the fig tree he said the fig tree will again sprout so let us see matthew 24 32 matthew 24 chapter verse 32 Matthew 24 32 Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and the potted fourth leaves ye know that summer is nigh See it clearly says learn from the parable of the fig tree you see when it put it forth leaves when it springs up when it again sprouts understand that we are very near dear brethren so it is our responsibility as jesus told to learn from the parable of the fig tree now it is our duty to study and learn from the fig tree the nation of israel because you see israel especially the land of jerusalem is very very important a place a holy place for three groups of people you see it is a very important place for the jews and also for the usually uh, the muslims and also for the christians but above all you see the whole world is seeing israel the activities going on in israel especially today we know there is a heavy war that is going on between israel and gaza so the whole world are watching israel hence as per the bible the world's time clock is israel if you need to understand how near we are for god's kingdom and what all things are going to happen we need to study and watch israel so hence uh, today we're going to study about israel the past the present and the future israel the name israel you see actually was given to jacob we all know very well that jacob one night he fought with the angels and he did not leave the angel until he was blessed so that is the time that angel changed his name from jacob to israel now what does that word israel mean if you see the word israel means he that will rule as god you see and through jacob the 12 tribes of israel was found Jacob on his deathbed he blessed all the 12 sons and through the 12 sons the 12 tribes of Israel was formed and a nation of Israel was formed dear brethren we all know very well that uh, this uh, nation of Israel were captive in Egypt for many years then when god heard their prayer god delivered them from the clutches of pharaoh and brought them to the promised land once they came to the promised land god gave them judges it was for a nearly a period of 450 years that god gave them the judges then god gave them you see the kings later on it was for a period of 513 years you see and many more favor that god had given to israel you see but all these things ended when they crucify our you see almighty god's only son on the cross hence uh, you see pilate uh, you see when he was uh, giving the judgment to jesus he said i find uh, no you see uh, problem with this man i would like to release him i would release him but uh, the nation of israel uh, they did not agree they told uh, crucify him crucify him crucify him 
and Pilar just washed his hands sir, and told, I am innocent of this blood. I have nothing to do with this blood. But that is the time that the nation of Israel, the entire Jewish people, they brought the condemnation upon their own, upon themselves to their own words. Sir. What did they say? They said, let his blood be upon us and our children. It happened the same way, dear brethren. Read Matthew 27, 25. Matthew 27, 25. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Very good. Let his blood be upon us and our children. We will answer for it. You see, as they demanded, the same way happened. They had to answer the blood of Christ which they crucified on the cross. God punished them in such a way that 70 AD, the Israel was completely destroyed as a nation and they were scattered all over the world. You see, the Romans people, you see, they knew very well that uh, Israel, if they are taken captivity, again they will come to the promised land. Again they will become a nation because they have studied the Israel's history very well and they came to know correctly that they had gone to captivity several times. But whenever they have returned from the captivity, they come and settle in the same land. They did not want this one to happen. They wanted the Israel to be taken out from the world map. Hence, the scattered Jewish people all over the world. They were scattered all over the world. You see, this was the fulfillment of God's prophecy. Read Jeremiah 16 chapter verse 13. Jeremiah 16 and 13. Therefore will I cast you out of this land in, into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers. And there shall ye serve other gods day and night, when I will not show you favor. Very good sir. See, I will cast you into the land that you know not, neither your fathers. You see, which is the land uh, from the uh, where the fathers came? You know, for the forefather Abraham, he came from Babylon. You see, he was living in the land of uh, Ur, the Chaldeans, that is the Babylon. You see, that is uh, today's Iraq. Here he says, I will scatter you to the place where your fathers did not know at all. And which is this place if you see the Abraham? That was all the nations which are far from Asia. They were scattered all over the world. It says, when I scatter you, you shall serve other gods. Other gods means what? Not our one supreme god, but other leaders, lords, who rule over you day and night. But I will not show you any favor. Since the scattering of the Jews all over the world, you see, they are to live in different nations. But the Bible says uh, they shall be regathered. Read the same chapter, verse 15. Jeremiah 16, chapter 15 verse. But the Lord left that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither, whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their I and that I gave unto their fathers. Uh, I will bring them again into their land that I gave into their fathers. Uh, say, God promises that I will scatter you. I'm not sure if ever. But a time will come that I will gather you. A time will come that the withered fig tree shall sprout again. He shall spring up again. When you see that the pear, the, the fig tree, you see, huh, sprouting again, Understand that the kingdom of God is very near. So the regathering of Israel is a very beautiful sign, a clear sign before us that we are living in the Lord's parousia. But what did God do? What did God say? You see, just uh, he would bring Israel like that? No. He would first uh, punish them severely for all the sins they have done. Read verse 18, sister. Yes, brother. Uh, Jeremiah 16. 18th verse. And first I was recompensed there 
iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land they have filled my inheritance with the care cases of their distasteable and the abominable things but first uh, i will recompense their iniquity and their sins double you see god said before gathering them i will punish them double uh, hence uh, you see dear brethren as per this prophecy the regathering of nation of israel happened uh, and on may 14th 1948 israel got their independence why because God had promised to Father Abraham, saying, "I will make a covenant with you. Lift up your eyes and see the land which is uh, in front of you, the north, the west, the east, the south, the entire land. You see, I will give it unto you wherever you keep your feet. All this land I shall give it unto you, even from the river of Egypt, the uh, river Nile, from there to the river." Euphrates, sir. such is the boundary that God has fixed to Israel, uh, dear brethren. Therefore, you see the greatest miracle in this century. You know which is that one? It is the great regathering of Israel with the same faith, with the same culture, with the same language. You see, with the same trust and faith on God to the same promised land is the greatest miracle. Than man going to moon. Why? Why do they say that one? You see, because generally when somebody goes to different nations, if they settle there, they usually get mixed up with this culture. Like for example, if the foreigners come to India, what do they do? They see this Indian culture. You see, and they worship the Indian gods and get adjusted to it. You see, they change over. You see, they they completely leave their. God and religion uh, and their culture, you see. And like for example, even if a person goes out from India to abroad, what do they do? They marry somebody and get adjusted to complete that culture, uh, you see. But the nation of Israel is not like that. Uh. They are the only people who don't worship other god than their god. They are the only people they don't have the they don't worship the follow other culture than their culture. So the regathering of Israel. With the same faith, the same culture, you see, and trust, uh, that was the greatest miracle. Dear brethren, the favor to Israel began to be, you see, come again since eighteen seventy-eight. You see, huh? since eighteen seventy-eight, a lot of wonders and favor began to pour upon Israel. All this began. <clears throat> During the Russia-Turkish war, we all know that uh, there was a great war between Russia and Turkey. All the Arab uh, places which we have today—Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, you see, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, UAE—all this uh, land was called as the land of Turkey. And there was a war between this Turkey and uh, you see the Russia. That is the time that the Britishers. Uh, You see, supported uh, and fought for them, uh, the land of uh, Turkey. You see, and uh, the Berlin Congress of Nations uh, during that time had the power. Uh, you see, to distribute this land, they won the war. Actually, you see, the Berlin Congress of Nations, they won the war, and the entire land of Turkey was in their hands, and they can distribute it to all the Arab nations equally. They had that power. Now, what is this Berlin Congress of Nations? You see, today we have United Nations. You see, any problem arises in the whole world, United Nations immediately rush to it and try to solve it. So similarly, then it was the Berlin Congress of Nations. You know, the head of the Berlin Congress of Nations. Who was he? It is none other than a Jew. His name was Benjamin D. Israel, or else was also called as Lord Bickensfield. Into his hand came the entire land of Turkey, and that is the time that uh, he granted a, a privilege for the Jews to come and settle in the Promised Land. And since then, the first Jewish settlement 
began to happen in the place called as Petta Tikva. The first uh, Jewish settlement happened in 1878. You can see the photos there. That's the photos of the first uh, you see, Jewish settlement. This was also a Bible prophecy. The door of oh, Petta Tikva. It is written in the Bible. Read Osea 2.15. Hosea second chapter fifteenth verse, and I will, I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of the valley of anchor for the door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Thank you, sir. So I will give her her vineyards. Uh, the valley of Akor for a door of hope. That is the name Petatikwa. Petatikwa means a door of hope in the Jewish language. You see, and that is the verse that is given in the Bible. It says, I will give her the valley, a door of hope, where she can be regathered to that uh, promised land. Uh, dear brethren, you see, the land of Israel was such a land that... Uh, you see, as soon as if a person comes to the land, you see the promised land, it was so infected with all the weeds, you see, that any person who came to Israel within 11 days, he would definitely be infected with malaria. That was the place, you see, the nation of Israel. Today, what it is, no? It was earlier a very desolate place, completely infected, you see. And... The nation of Israel, the people who came and settled there, some really around 12,000 Jewish people, they began to develop the land. You see? Yeah, and not only that one, you know, they had to purchase the land from the Arabs who were settling there. You see, they, nobody had lived there, but that land was purchased from the Arabs. See, Jeremiah 33.10 and later on, Jeremiah 32.44. Jeremiah 33 10. Thus saith the Lord again, there shall be heard in this place, which ye say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast. Jeremiah 32 44. Men shall buy fields for money and subscribe the evidences and seal them and take with, with witnesses in the land of Benjamin and in the place, places about Jerusalem and in the cities of Judah and in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the valley and in the cities of the south. For I will cause their captivity to return, said the Lord. You see? The land which is desolate without man and without beast. You see, in that place, again there shall be heard a sound of joy. This was the condition of Israel. Nobody lived there. They had to purchase their own land. It was completely infected with malaria. They had to clean it and develop it. You see, so slowly Israel became to be developed. And uh, you see, the wonderful Zionist movement was started by the father of nation of Israel, that is Theodore Herzl. Theodore Herzl was a journalist. He used to publish a lot of articles, a lot of pamphlets, notices to all over the world, it distributed to the Jewish people and encouraged them to regather to the promised land. And it is during that time, you see, in 19... Uh, 17, a Balfour declaration was uh, petitioned uh, through the League of Nations uh, requesting the world powers to grant the entire promised land to the nation of Israel. And this was obtained in 1917. This request was given in 1914 and this was got in 1917. You see, how did they get it? They got it through a person named as Chain Wiseman. Now, who is this Chain Wiseman? If you see, Chain Wiseman was the one 
who invented the gunpowder formula. You see, and the Britishers, who were the world powers then, they used this gunpowder formula in the First World War and won the war. You see, we all know that uh, before this uh, uh, gunpowder formula was invented, uh, there was no bullets. You see, the way they could fire uh, like gun and all that. But there were only firingis. Uh, you see, uh, all those things were there, but uh, no bullets were there. You see, hence, uh, once they invented this one, the Britishers won the World War, the First World War. You see, after winning the First World War, the entire land uh, was again in their hands. Uh, and they had the privilege to distribute to everybody. And uh, you know, dear brethren, one more grace upon Israel was that in the League of Nations, the, the person who had the privilege and the authority to distribute the land was again a Jew. He was uh, General Allenby. And uh, General Allenby requested uh, chain wise men to ask whatever he wants. You see, and uh, they were, his request would be granted because of him. The world war is won. Imagine the first world war, the entire world, you see, was seeing it, and because of him, they won the war. When the chain wise man was requested, whatever you ask, we will give you. You see, imagine what uh, chain wise man would have asked. He did not ask uh, any wealth, any gold, any huge property, or any. Very lot of uh, great rewards for uh, himself. Uh, you know, but what did he request? He requested in 19, you see, 17 and 14, the nation of Israel had given a petition to give the promised land uh, to them. I request, uh, please give the promised land to my people, the nation of Israel. That was his only request, Abraham. And in the League of Nations, his request was granted. That is how, you see, the nation, the land of Israel was again God to the Jewish people and from the whole world, the Jewish people began to gather, began to pour in. How? Let us read Jeremiah 16 chapter verses 14 to 16. Jeremiah 16, 14 to 16. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord left and brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord left that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whether he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Behold. See, it says, huh? I will bring up uh, the children of Israel from the land of north. Which is the land of north? Uh, to the land of Israel, if you see, that is uh, the European continents, uh, Russia, America, you see the western countries uh, and uh, other places. Uh, he says, from all the lands, uh, whither uh, he had driven them, God would regather again, uh, you see, the people of Israel. I will bring them again into their land and give it unto their fathers, uh, you see, which God had promised uh, that uh, he will give it to his fathers. Uh, the same land, you see, would be granted to them. Actually, you know, the opportunity was given for Israel to choose a land in Africa. We told, why are you requesting for a small land? I will give you a very big land in Africa. You see, but leave this land. No, but Israel people said, no, even though it is very small, we want that land itself because that was the promise which God had made to the forefathers. He said, you see, what does the prophecy say? That I will give unto their fathers. I will bring them again into their land, not foreign land that I gave unto their fathers. God had promised to Abraham, taking a oath upon himself. No? The same land was again given to the land, the nation of Israel. Then next, what happened? Continue, sir. Yes, brother. Behold, I will send for many fisheries, saith the lords, and they shall fish them. 
and after will I send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rock. Mm. It says, Behold, I will send many fishes. How will God gather a nation of Israel to the promised land? It is through fishers. They shall fish them. And afterwards, I will send many hunters. And they shall hunt them from mountains, from every hill, and out of the holes of each and every rock. Now, what is the meaning of this um, fisher and hunter? You see, how do they do the fishing? You see, the fishing is done with a bait. Now, who is the one who did the fishing of the Jewish people? It is Theodore Herzl. Theodore Herzl, through his writings, through his journals, through his books, he encouraged many Jewish people to regather again. So, so many people came, but not everybody. How did the Huh? How will the other people be gathered? The prophecy says, first I will send fishers, next I will send hunters. Who are the hunters? Hunters are the people who hunt people. You see, hunting, is it so easy? Is it very pleasant? No. It's very painful. The person who hunted the Jewish people is Hitler. Hitler hunted down the Jewish people all around the world, you see, he brought them, you see, to the concentration camps. Each and every concentration camps were so huge, uh, nearly hundreds of acres. And each and every concentration camp, they used to have gas chambers. You see, this is the picture of the gas chamber, you see. Now, this is a, this is a small room. This is actually a capacity of occupying only 50 people. But you know, in this uh, chamber, they used to dump uh, more than 100 Jews. And there is no window at all for this uh, chamber. You see the same chamber when it is locked. Uh, this is how it looks. There is a small hole in the door. That's all. Apart from that one, there is no space uh, uh, for uh, any uh, oxygen to come in or uh, any air to go out. Uh, and on the top, from the top, they used to you see, pump in poisonous gas. Imagine 100 people jump packed uh, in this uh, chamber. You're putting some poisonous gas. And what will happen to the people? They used to suffocate and die. Then, uh, you see, even though they, they used to scream, they used to cry, nobody used to come and help them. When all the people are dead, you see, their dead bodies uh, were taken to crematorium. You see, through three stretchers. You see, they were taken to the crematorium. Each and every person's dead body was completely postmortem. Entire body, you see, was postmortem. You see, why? Because the Jewish people were very rich people. When Hitler came and attacked them, when they used to be taken to the concentration camp, they knew very well that they would confiscate all their wealth. So, Jewish people, they had all very, very rich dimension and all. They swallowed it, you see. So, they can leave somewhere else. If they go and escape, they can leave somewhere else. You see, you know, Hitler knew this one. What did you know Hitler do? He killed everybody. Systematically, not even one person was left alive, you see. Hunted down each and every people, you see. And when Hitler came, that all those things were inside them. He killed everybody, post-mortem everybody, and took out all the, you see, diamonds that were swallowed by the Jewish people. And after that one, their bodies were burnt. See, this uh, 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 crematorium, you see, was running continuously for, without stop, continuously for nearly uh, more than four to five years. Continuously, day by day, you see, so many bodies used to come, they used to burn it out. And all the ashes, after burning all the ashes, even that one was not dispersed. This was gathered under a shelter. Such way, more than 60 lakhs Jews were slaughtered. 
they were taken to the concentration camps uh, they were not given uh, uh, you see any comfort uh, this is the place uh, they had to live you know what was the daily meal they had to uh, eat and drink uh, it was just a half uh, a liter of uh, black tea and uh, a few a little bit of uh, soup and just uh, one slice of bread that was the entire day's food apart from that one they ran days to get nothing not even a little drop of water for them and no bath at all they had to live in their own filth you see all their hairs were totally cut off in these hairs you see uh, carpets were made for the german army their shoes were you see taken after uh, their bones you see and those things were completely dismantled and segregated there were even the skulls and the thigh bone and all the things and they did medical experiments on the jewish people to be all know very well that whenever there is a medicine that is newly invented usually the experiment on the mammals the you see the rats and they see if it really has any side effects so then only at last if everything is successful they will do it for human beings but any new medicine that was invented they did all the trials upon the living people you can see the jewish uh, children there they don't look like human beings uh, you see they were uh, awkwardly completely you see uh, totally disfigured uh, you see because of this uh, medical experiments uh, you can see this uh, uh, test uh, that are done on women you see women uh, you see upon them lot of different medical tests were done uh, like uh, what would happen if a man got mixed with animals you see what type of generation what type of you see production will come those things were all uh, done upon the jewish women they then you see and uh, uh, the skin of the jewish people were paled you see and because and used the skin to prepare leather jackets uh, leather items uh, leather shoes uh, for the german army you know and uh, german army's uh, paper weight what was the paper weight they used to put it on the table the unborn child from a jewish mother's womb that was the paper weight of the jewish army such uh, pathetically they were tortured you see their nation flag was used as the german house carpet you see dear brethren when all this uh, jewish people were tortured in such a way they all vacated uh, their land they were all settled in europe and all uh, but when this persecution came in the, in the second world war everybody vacated dear brethren majority of the jewish uh, left the uh, place uh, they thought if we are living in our country nobody would come and harm in such a way so they all ran you see to their promised land this is also bible prophecy you know how the people came read jeremiah 31st chapter was 8 to 9 jeremiah 31 8 to 9 behold i will bring them from the north countries and gather them from the coasts of the earth and with them the blind and the lame the woman with the child and her <clears throat> that travels with the children together a great company shall return thither they shall come with weeping and with supplications will i lead them i will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in the straight way where <clears throat> where in they shall not stumble for i am a father to israel and ephraim is my firstborn who did uh, god bring what does the bible say i will bring them from the north country you see from all the coast where they gathered who will come the blind the lame the women with children and traveling with child a great company will come how will they come ma? they will come with weeping and supplications they brethren they did not come very joyfully they were all persecuted hence they thought 
ayyo let us leave all these things let us go to our promised land at least we will live they came weeping and running this was a great exodus dear brethren all over the world the jewish people regathered in the nation of israel you see uh, recently also that means nearly around 10 15 years before there was a attack in bombay in nariman point you know the terrorist attack there you know lot of places in mumbai you know they all targeted the jewish people and so many jewish people were settled there even those people also they vacated and went to their promised land slowly what happened as the people began to gather in israel israel was slowly developed so there was no rain in israel for nearly 1800 years but exactly in 1878 first time the rain began to come in the land of israel and uh, slowly they developed their nation just see the condition of israel before during the 1870s 1880s and how is it today you see there's lot of difference dear brethren so all the people who came and settled in uh, israel various people came educated the scientists the engineers the doctors they all gathered together put their hand together to develop their promised land you know today israel has one of the most developed nation in agriculture field you see all the modern agriculture system is developed by israel today we use no the drip drip irrigation sprinklers and all who has developed this technology it is developed by israel people they are using this technology to agriculture for a cultivation in desert land where there is no water at all you see they don't waste water exactly what the tree or the water plant needs exactly only such water and uh, is given to the plant uh, and uh, good source of cultivation is done you see the tractors the modern uh, harvesting equipments the plowing equipments who has invented this one is all invented by israel before this one what was there only they should take the bullock and plow it but now where is that bullock and all it is gone totally because it is replaced by equipments you see modern machinery this was all invented by the israel people and today israel is the you see the country which exports you see beautiful flowers and vegetables to all over the world great exporter of uh, fruits and vegetables is israel and uh, you know the hybrid fruits uh, what we use today i don't know about your uh, solomon island but if you come to india we have hybrid fruits uh, that is all the fruits are equal size if you go and buy an apple all the apples will be of the same size all the pomegranates all the banana it will be of the same size the worst developed this banana you see this is hybrid fruits that was promised to israel remember when uh, the spies went to uh you see see the promised land during the days of moses what did they bring they brought the grapes uh, two people were holding up on the shoulders uh, the fruits were so heavy you see those are the hybrid fruits uh, this is found in nation of israel uh, you see this is the technology the whole world are using today in israel and see about the cattle you see the sheep the chicken you see it's not like our lean very small thin chicken and all they are all very healthy chicken ha huh? their milk is also very fat you see and sheep is also you see very healthy this is how the nation of israel was developed by the first prime minister david ben gurion david ben gurion was the first prime minister of israel and he was a very zealous person he was a very religious religious and orthodox person so once he became a prime minister immediately he called for all the scientists all the engineers all the botanists all the geologists in israel and had a meeting and based upon biblical information the land of israel was developed how see in the bible where all the wells are there that information is given what all things will grow in which place that information is also given in the bible based on this information the land of israel was developed let us read deuteronomy 8 chapter 7 to 9 deuteronomy 8 and 7 to 9 for the lord thy good bringeth thee into the good land and a good 
of books of water sorry sorry brother a land of books of water of fountains and the depth that spring out of valleys and hills a land of wheat and barley and wines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of olive olive oil or olive and honey and a, a land where in those shalt eat bread without scarcens those shalt not lack anything in it a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills do mace dig their brace okay what is there in land of israel information is given in the bible it says the land of brooks of water there is always water available in israel how did you find out information is given on jacob's well abraham's well huh? so where all well is there is given in the bible see in the bible you have heard bethsada bethsheba you see and the bethsheba huh? so what is the meaning of these words so beer bethsheba beer huh? bethsheba bethsheba means a pool where jesus uh, healed the blind man you see and uh, huh? beer beer in hebrew means water you see the source of water uh, you see huh? the wells uh, where all wells are there information is given in the bible uh. so david ben gurion he searched the bible uh. so this is the place the bible says there is a well they dig it here so when they dig it they got water uh, based on the biblical information they got it uh, and it says uh, you see a land of fountains uh, and depths uh, that spring out of valleys of hills uh, a land of wheat uh, so they developed uh, uh, wheat where the wheat should grow barley should grow wine should grow fig tree should grow pomegranate should grow olive now where does olive grow in israel huh there is a place called as olive mountain so oh, he yeah, recognized oh in that olive mountain if he grow olives in the nearby places what will happen now uh? it will uh, Huh? Come nicely. So, based on biblical information, those trees and plants were planted, uh, and did agriculture. They uh, got good yield to their brand. And not only that one, you see, uh, beautiful flowers. You see, Bible says about uh, the rose of Sharon, the lilies of field. You see, where will, where where does all this grow? It grows in a place called as Sharon. To identify the place, their beautiful flowers were grown. And cedar, Israel is famous for cedar. Where does the cedar grow? Lebanon. You see, so biblical information that developed Israel. It says, uh, land flowing with milk and honey. In whose stones there is iron? Iron ore. Huh? The domain is dig brass. Uh, that is uh, copper mines. Uh. So based on biblical information, iron ore, copper mines, all these things developed. You see, and uh, we have one more information Bible. You see, Lot. We all know that uh, Lot uh, he chose uh, the land of uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because that land was like Garden of Eden. You see, read this verse, Genesis thirteen ten. Genesis thirteen ten, and Lot left lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed the Sodoma and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, land, Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. See, it was like a garden of Eden, it seems. Sir. Which land? The land near, uh, you see, Sodom and Gomorrah. That is today's Dead Sea. So there, they developed, uh, you see, the land because it was well watered. Uh. Today. The river Jordan is a source of water supply for the entire nation of Israel. Based on this biblical information, only the Abraham, you see, lot of trees, uh, plants were planted, and uh, Israel developed. Uh, you know, today's technology, what we are using, the USB, universal serial bus port. These were developed by Israel. Earlier, how was it? Uh, if you see, ten twenty years before, what was there? Uh, There was no USB. You see, there was only each and every equipment had a different uh, cable. We need to purchase that particular cable and install the driver. Now, what is there? No installing driver at all. Take USB cable, plug it. Every device will work automatically. No installation is required. Why? 
this technology was developed by Israel. Pen drive, memory chip. Eh? Who developed it? Israel. Earlier, there used to be DVD uh, or CD. We need to burn it. And even after burning, there is no success at all. No guarantee of success. But today, a small memory chip, it can contain GBs, gigabytes of data. You see, who invented this technology? This is Israel's technology. The mobile which we are using, see, we are communicating, you are also using the mobile, no? Mobile, laptop, everything. Whose technology is this one? This is Israel's technology. The lithium battery. Today, everywhere we have electrical vehicles, no? Huh? Who invented the, this battery, sir? Earlier, how was the battery? Huh? It was like a, a pencil uh, torch battery, you see? And that used to come only for eight hours. That was too expensive. Each and every time you change the battery. But now, how is it? Uh? Rechargeable battery, lithium battery, nothing happens. Charge it, use it for nearly two, three days, nothing will happen. This technology was invented by Israel. The solar technology, solar panels, solar heater, solar generator, who developed a is all done by Israel. You see, the world's richest people are Jewish people. Today, in America, stock exchange, the biggest company doing transaction are the Jewish people. You know, Bill Gates, Microsoft, he's a founder. He's a Jew. Levi's Jeans Company. He's a Jew. Oracle Company. He's a Jew. You see, Dell Company is a Jew. Bloomberg Television is a Jew. Intel Company is a Jew. Nike Company is a Jew. Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg is also a Jew. This is a short list what I am telling you. But a lot of many more people in the whole world, you see, they are all very, very wealthy and high profile people. They are all Jews. And the technology, the drone, who invented it? Israel. The more number of scientists in Israel than all the world combined together they have ran. You see, and uh, you know, in Israel, there is a compulsory rule that as soon as a person uh, finishes his 10th, uh, they have to compulsory serve in Israel's army. They are self-equipped. You see, in such a way, Israel was developed. So once Israel began to develop and, uh, you see, and uh, GDP increased, the unemployment rate started to reduce. Today, unemployment rate in, uh, rates in Israel is less than single digit percentage. But uh, compared to the other people, other play nations which are surrounding Israel, it is nearly more around 60 to 70 percent. So all this uh, began to prick uh, the eyes of the Arabs uh, who are living in the neighboring uh, nations of Israel, especially during uh, Yasser Arafat's period. You know very well, but Yasser Arafat was the PLO's founder. This began to prick his eyes. Then he formed a, a one, uh, one group called as PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization, and he fought for it. He claimed that this place, what Israel has developed, is uh, the place what actually belongs to the Arabs. And they have to get it legally. And he fought for it. You see, all these problems began to arise during the Balfour Declaration. We have, we have, we have, I initially to told you about the Balfour Declaration. In the Balfour Declaration, uh, the mandate was given for the Jewish people to get 3% of the land out of, nine, out of 100%. 97% of the land was allotted to the Arabs. The Jewish people asked only 3% of the land. This was Agreed, but later on, only 1% of the land was given to Israel. Why? Because when the mandate was prepared and when it was supposed to be sanctioned, huge oil wells was discovered in Middle East. We all know, until such time, there was no demand for oil at all. You see, please uh, concentrate. Uh, you see? In the First World War, there was no gunpowder formula. 
and during that time there was no uh, high demand for oil because people used to use maximum steam there used to be steam engine you see not so much demand for fuels and all because not so much of vehicles were there but as the days progressed what happened everybody depended upon machines sir that run upon fuel and this fuel source was seen in the middle east so once the middle east people mainly the arabs they knew the potential of this fuel you see they pressured the world powers to give minimum land to israel that is how they ran israel with lot of difficulties lot of trials got their land and ultimately on may 14 1948 israel got a freedom you know to your great surprise as soon as they got freedom in the evening tomorrow morning 6 o'clock six arab nations attacked israel and decided to push them to the sea you see by god's grace you know the soldiers were under risk to one but yet uh, israel won the war and in 1967 again six day war happened again all the arabs attacked israel but even then god gave them the victory these are all different subjects to brethren you see hence uh, nobody could destroy israel they turned to they they decided to burn israel they decided to annihilate israel completely but uh, nobody could do anything to israel why because israel is god's is a chosen people they are god's uh, witnesses sir so this is the you see past and the present so what about the future what will happen to the future of israel we all know already there is a heavy war in israel but what will happen to them in the future dear brethren you see let us see what the bible says read zechariah 14 1 and 2 <clears throat> Zechariah 14, chapter 1 and 2. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, <clears throat> and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses refilled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city thank you it says zechariah 14 chapter says i'll gather all nations against israel for battle this is the third world war shortly this will happen all nations will be against israel but today all the nations are not against israel remember you see some nations are favoring israel but a time will come all nations shall be against israel you see they will come to battle against jerusalem then what will happen the city will be taken now today israel is taken no only few people 250 people were taken captivity for 250 people so much of havoc entire gaza is destroyed what will happen if the entire city is taken imagine that will happen houses will be destroyed you can see gaza's condition this will be tomorrow israel's condition women shall be ravished already we can see that one women are arrested and spoiled this will happen in coming days in israel half of the city shall go to captivity 250 people went captivity half of the city means imagine half population of israel will die they will go half of the people will be left in israel that is the time that god will fight for israel none of this technology dear brethren what we see today none of the technology will work we saw already the failure of iron dome in this war so israel replaced that one iron dome is a waste it could not stop 3000 rockets that came early in the morning it has a limit they understood it So none of the technology dear brethren none of the scientist everybody none of the rich people can do nothing you see that is the time they will turn to god not even america can come and stop that is the time they can only turn to god only turn and trust god read ezekiel 
Ezekiel 13, 16, And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel, as the cloud of a cover the land. It shall be in the later days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified the thee, O God, before their eyes. Mm. Thou shall come upon against my people of Israel as a cloud covers the land. How will the enemies cover the land of Israel as a cloud covers the land? Entire world powers will come against Israel. Nothing will save them. That is the time they will cry to God for help. Read Zechariah 12 chapter, 10th verse 4. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of a grace and of the supplications, and they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, and as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness of him, as one that in is in bitterness for his firstborn. Mm. As they weep for the first one, so the nation of Israel shall cry. They will be in supplication. They will plead for God for mercy. Then they will recognize Jesus was the firstborn for Almighty God. Even today, the Jewish people don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. They are waiting for the Messiah. Then their eyes will be opened. Then they will realize, oh, oh Jesus is that Messiah. Then they will turn to God, your brethren. Then God will use this opportunity and fight for Israel. Read Zechariah 14.3. We just now read Zechariah 14.2. That half of Israel will go to captivity. Then what will happen? Zechariah 14.3, sister. Zechariah 14.3 Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Then God will fight. How? As he fought in the day of battle. How did God fight in the day of battle? Take a lot of examples. You study from your Bible. How did God fight uh, during the days of Gideon? 1,20,000 Midianites came and attacked uh, Israel. Just a small people of 300 defeated 1,20,000. They did not take any sword with them. They did not fight, did not lift their sword at all. Even before they went, everybody was totally dead. They just took the loot and came back. This is how God will fight for Israel. During the days of Sennacherib, he came and attacked Israel. Ezekiel prayed to the Lord. Just he prayed in the night, the angel of the Lord came and destroyed the entire camp of Assyria. This is how God will fight in the Third World War. It will be the Lord's fight. That is the time that Israel eyes will be opened and kingdom of God shall be established in Israel. Once the kingdom of God is established in Israel, then what will happen? God will resurrect the ancient worthies. By this time, the ancient worthies would be resurrected. And through them, God would make a covenant with Israel. Now, how will that covenant be? Jeremiah 31st chapter 31 to 34. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was and has been unto them, said the Lord. 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in, it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. 34. Ah, see? How will the God's covenant be? The first law covenant was given up on the stone tablets. They broke it. No use. So God has decided not to write it on paper or tablet and write upon their hearts. By heart. It will be within their heart. 
The law of the Lord shall be imprinted in their heart. They shall follow the Lord by heart. Then they shall be God's people and he will be their God. Next. Huh? 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. I will remember their sin no more. They will be totally forgiven, the least, even to the greatest. Everybody shall know the Lord. Everybody shall understand the Lord. Today, everybody knows the Lord. In Israel also. Nobody. But uh, when God will give the victory in the third world war, everybody's eyes, ears should be open. They shall recognize it is Jesus who is doing it. He is the one who is ruling invisibly in the air. He is the one who is ruling and from there his kingdom is being established. He is come and he is pounding the world powers. The world will realize. First, Israel will realize. Then the whole world will realize Oh, oh, some invisible power is working here. And through Israel, the whole world will come to know that it is our Lord who has returned since 1874 that he is establishing his kingdom in Israel. Let us read Zechariah 8, chapter 21 to 23. Zechariah 8, chapter 21 to 23. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people and the strong nation shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem, and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass, that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the script of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Hmm. You see, who will come to Israel, it seems? Yeah, many people in strong nations. Huh? Many people will come. Strong nations means what? Small small nations. No strong. America, Russia, Germany, huh? British. You see, they will all come and seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem. Not in America, London, Paris. In Jerusalem. And pray before the Lord. That is the time the whole world's eyes and ears of understanding will be opened. You see, dear brethren, it says, ten men shall take hold of all languages. Why ten men is given? Ten is a, you see, the whole number. You see, seven is a perfect number. Ten is a whole number, a complete number. Therefore, ten virgins. Uh, a church is complete to ten virgins. Ten means complete. Uh, so, ten men out of all languages means what? Uh, which is this uh, uh, group of all nations today? United Nations, all nations are there now united together. See, it's given in the Bible. You see, ten men shall take hold of all lang languages of the nations. They shall hold the skirt of a Jew. They shall come to Israel and say, you, you, we will come. We have heard that God is there with you. We will come with you. We will search our God. We want to know about your God because you are blessed. There is a lot of peace in Israel. But we don't have peace. Please tell about your God. And that is how the nation of Israel will be a blessing to all the nations. And slowly, God's kingdom shall be established all over the world. So dear brethren, this is a, a, a short uh, and a brief uh, you see, introduction how uh, Israel's past was there, how Israel's present is there, and the future, uh, what will happen to Israel. So, may the Lord add his blessings to his own words. And thanks everybody for uh, kindly listening to the discourse. Also, thank all the brethren for giving the opportunity. So, ultimately, we thank our Almighty God and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
for this privilege. Thank you, brother. God bless.